Why would you buy bread at the store when you can just make it yourself? And it's actually not too hard. So today we're gonna do that. Let's get into it. If you're new here, my name is Charlie, and on this channel, I show you how to make delicious food using simple ingredients and techniques so that you can become a more confident home cook. So let's make some bread. And we're gonna start off here by mixing the dough. Of course, you'll need whole wheat flour, and then you'll also need some sort of white flour. I'd recommend bread flour because it contains more gluten than all-purpose, so it gives the bread a nicer chew, but I have made this bread with all-purpose flour and it still works out fine that way too. So just use whatever you have, but in this case, I'm using bread flour. So in the bowl of a stand mixer, combine 165 grams of whole wheat flour with 255 grams of your bread flour or all-purpose flour. And of course, you don't need to use a stand mixer, but it just makes it a bit easier. Now add 270 grams of warm water, preferably at around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 38 degrees Celsius. This recipe will make one loaf, so of course feel free to scale the recipe to make more loaves. Then, optionally, you can let your dough auto-lease, or in other words, rest for about 30 minutes to allow the starches in the flour to break down as the gluten starts to develop. You don't have to do this, but it does help a lot with the gluten development process, so I'd highly recommend it, especially if you're using all-purpose flour. So I like to do this in my proofing box, which I can keep at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 29 degrees Celsius, but you can also simulate this warm environment by placing your dough into the oven with the light on. Anyways, after that 30 minute auto lease, my dough is already looking a lot more extensible and it's time to add the next ingredients. So add 4 grams of instant yeast, along with 32 grams of honey, 36 grams of brown sugar, and 10 grams of salt. Then, either using a mixing spoon or your stand mixer, stir the dough until all of the ingredients are fully incorporated. We're using a relatively small amount of yeast here, which will allow the dough to rise a bit slower so it develops even more flavor as it rises. So once the dough is fully mixed, continue to knead using the dough hook attachment on your stand mixer for about 10 more minutes. This is where the majority of the gluten is going to develop in the dough, so this step is very important. And as always, you can also knead by hand if you prefer. Either way, you're looking for the dough to form a nice smooth ball. In the meantime, get out 3 tablespoons or 42 grams of unsalted butter and heat it up just slightly to soften it. Once we add the butter, it'll hinder the gluten development, so that's why we're going to add it after the kneading. So after your 10 minutes of kneading, go ahead and add the butter a little bit at a time and continue to mix for another 5 minutes. As you can see, I like my butter cut up into little cubes to help it incorporate easier. This butter is going to add a lot of nice richness and flavor to the bread. You may need to crank up the speed on your stand mixer and scrape down the size of the bowl every now and then, but it'll mix in eventually. Now after that 5 minutes, we're finally done mixing and it's time for the initial rise. So just form your dough into a ball and cover up your bowl, then allow the dough to rise until doubled in size which should take about 45 minutes to an hour in your warm environment. Like I mentioned before, slowing down the rise will also help the dough to develop more flavor, so feel free to let it rise at a cooler temp if you want to slow down the rise. Either way, once the dough has doubled in size, just remove it from your warm environment and punch it down to degas it a bit, then it's time for the final shaping. So start by dusting your surface with a light coating of flour, then turn your dough out onto the surface. Make sure to leave the top side of the dough unfloured because we'll need it to stick to itself during the shaping process. I like to drop some more flour around the perimeter of the dough like so, then work it underneath using a metal bench scraper just to make sure the dough doesn't stick to the work surface. For the actual shaping, start by working your dough out into a wide rectangle like so. Then fold the portion of the dough closest to you over the middle, then fold the left and right sides over each other in the same way. Finally, grab the two corners furthest away from you and fold them over, then tuck to develop a bit of tension. Then fold it over again and tuck and fold and tuck until you've reached the end of the loaf. Just fold the edges underneath like so to round it out and make sure to pop any large bubbles that form on the surface. Finally, I like to just drag the loaf along my work surface a few times to develop a bit more tension and make sure the seams at the bottom are completely closed. Then it's time to transfer the dough to your loaf pan for the final rise. So get out a greased 9x5 loaf pan and drop the loaf in making sure to keep the top side of the loaf facing up. Then just spray the top of the loaf with some more oil and cover your pan with plastic wrap. Allow the loaf to rise in your warm environment until it completely fills the pan which should take about 45 minutes to an hour. When your dough looks like it's almost ready, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 180 degrees Celsius. At this point, you can also prepare an egg wash to brush onto your loaf before baking, which just consists of one egg beat together with about one teaspoon of water. Now, once the loaf has risen to your liking, just remove the plastic wrap and brush it with your egg wash mixture, which will give the bread a nice shine and help it to develop its golden brown color. 
Then I like to sprinkle the loaf with some kosher salt for a bit of extra flavor, and optionally you can also sprinkle it with some rolled oats. Just make sure to drop them all over your counter as you do it. But seriously, there's a reason to drop them from this high up because it actually helps to distribute the oats more evenly over the loaf. And the same principle applies when you're salting your dishes, so that's why you always see chefs sprinkling salt from high up. It's not just because it looks cool, it actually helps to get a more even distribution. Anyways, once that's done, just transfer your loaf to your 350 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes until it's reached your desired golden brown color. Now it's not quite done yet, but at this point you'll just want to tent the loaf with a bit of foil to prevent any further browning. Then return the loaf to your oven for another 15 minutes to let the inside finish cooking. Then once it's done, you can remove your loaf to a wire rack to allow it to cool. And as always, when you bake bread, you'll want to wait at least half an hour before you cut into it because the inside is still finishing cooking as it cools. So there's your beautiful, tender, and slightly sweet honey wheat sandwich bread. So now that you know how to make it, if you want to learn how to make some sourdough bread, be sure to click the video on the bottom right corner of the screen. So there you go. I'll see you all in the next one.